Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Line Change, the NHL betting podcast from the Action Network. My name is Michael Leboff, and joining me are Nick Martin and Tim Kalinowski. And together, the three of us are going to break down the upcoming uh, three Stanley Cup playoff games on Friday and Saturday. A couple of game sixes on Friday night, two elimination games, and then uh, another game six on Saturday night as well. Um, we'll start with Florida and Boston. This one in Bean Town, uh, the Panthers had a chance to close it out. They couldn't do it on home ice in game five. Now they travel to Boston as a minus 150 favorite on the money line. Boston plus 125. Total here, five and a half with juice uh, to the under. Uh, really kind of just a solid effort from the Bruins. They won that game. I think the like that's it sounds obvious to say because they won the game, but I think that's got to be the blueprint for them coming uh, if they want to find their way to a game seven, I don't expect this to be high event, uh, especially out of the gates. So, I mean, it's, we're getting to that part of every series, right? Like where it's time to, to really start looking at the unders. So I'll, I'll start us off with, I, I think that the, uh, once again, the, the, the zero zero in the first period here is, is definitely something to consider Nick. Yeah, I'm on. I'm uh, on the unders as well. I think it's again very much the look, especially in a Bruins elimina- elimination game. Even more than some of the other teams, um, I think it's a good play here. I like the under one and a half in the first period to minus one thirty, and I like the game total to go under five and a half. Almost feels like those first period ones have been a little more effective. Maybe that's just fresh in my head because we tonight got the Canes Rangers. You took a tough beat on the zero zero. Um, I took a lesser beat on that, but I I still just feel like you look at it and that is the avenue for the Bruins. They're not going to generate a lot. They're not going to generate more than they did in game five. I'm not trying to say like that was a really impressive effort from Boston. Everyone was completely writing them off, you know, and they went in there and got a really gutty win on the road. It feels like one of those things. I think Carolina or Florida does have more to give. I think that was a bit of a letdown performance. They weren't at their best. I'm not trying to not credit Boston. But I think we will see them bounce back, and I do think they'll make it a little tougher on the Bruins to generate much. So I feel like we'll see just a really defensive, sharp game here. I, I kind of feel like we are going to see the Panthers find a way to get it done. I wouldn't hate. Um, you could also target the Bruins to go under their team totals, and I wouldn't be opposed to that at all. Um, but I think this is going to kind of follow a lot of the elimination game trends. And entering... The, or I should say the Game 6 and Game 7 trends. Entering tonight's play before that ridiculous Rangers-Hurricanes game, which I think was a lot. I mean, Freddie Anderson was horrific, and that kind of threw the game on its head. But I do feel... So the elimination games were averaging just under three goals, not com- not per team, three combined goals in the 6 and 7s. And I feel like that is kind of a trend worth following especially with the Bruins. They were one of the teams that was really brought that number down. And I think that we'll do just everything we know about them revolves around defense and goaltending. So I feel like in this spot, getting a five and a half and getting a reasonable first period under total is a good bet. So that's what I like here. Yeah, Nick, I'll take it a step further. Uh, this Stanley Cup playoffs, game six and sevens, the total is five and one to the under. The first period under is six and oh. In the total first period goals, this Stanley Cup playoff game, six and sevens, two goals. That That's it. And one of them, uh, obviously, tonight, Carolina and New York was scored with the 122 left, I believe, in the first period. So that's that's what we're dealing here. Obviously, super strong trends there. So I, I'm, I'm all in on the under. I'm all in on the first period under, like you guys said. And I'm also on Florida here. I hit Florida – the right after game five and it was like 166 Florida and it's since gone down and I would still take it. I, I, I think this is a little bit of an overreaction um, from game five. I just think that I honestly think game five was more about Florida than Boston. I think Florida just didn't really have their fastball. Um, Matthew Kachuk, not really, you know, kind of the Did I impact free? on the game that we're used to seeing. I just, I just, well, it doesn't matter. It's Riverside. So. Yeah. 
Um, anyway, yeah, I, I thought Florida was, uh, it was more about Florida. Um, so I think it's a bit of an overreaction here to what Boston's doing and, and like, oh, here we go again. Is this going to be the flip flop? Like all that seems like just kind of narrative stuff, not really into the handicap. Florida still carried more of the play. Florida is still a uh, superior team. And it's really just going to take a Jeremy Swayman playing out of his skates performance for, uh, for, Bo- uh, for Boston here. So I- I'm on Florida. Um, I, yeah, so it's like four plays on the game, but that, that's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah, and then the other note that we'll slide in for the 50th time is obviously part of that adjustment is the home ice. And again, in Boston games in particular, the home ice has meant nothing. In this specific series last year, road teams went five and two. In this year's series, it hasn't meant anything. So I think that is important when we're looking at how much this line has moved. And then I think also there's maybe a bit of a potential marsh end over reaction. So I do agree with you, Tim. I think it looks a touch short. Um, I, I think the Panthers have earned a slightly better number than this. It feels like they had one, one off game here. Away teams are now, um, away teams are now 35 and 29, I believe. No, 35 and 30 away teams. Now that's the number after, after the two games tonight. So yeah, we're still seeing um, a little bit overreaction to the, uh, to the home teams here. And Nick, you were about it last playoffs as well. Okay, so unders, uh, Panthers, uh, first period unders as well on that one. Then there is a nightcap on Friday night with uh, in Colorado and Denver. Uh, Dallas traveling at minus 102, Avalanche minus 115. Total here is at six and a half. Uh, Colorado with a really impressive showing on, uh, what was that, Wednesday, Thursday? I don't know, whatever day it was, they won. Uh, game five, uh, the big dogs were incredible. Uh, Kale McCarr, especially. Um, we we liked the number on Colorado in that game. I thought for for the most part, we, we were thinking that the market was kind of overreaction to the, 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 the avalanche sagging after the, the Nachushkin and Taves uh, news early or right before game four. Uh, they righted the ship and now they head home for a chance to force a game seven. And I'm going to say the same thing again here. Like, especially in a game like this, um, where the total's high, you're going to find value on the under because I think that as much as Colorado wants to push, like, that's the way they're going to want to play. Um, it's just, I don't expect it to them to come guns blazing, playing high risk hockey right out, uh, right from the jump, right? Like, Dallas can counter, uh, with the best of them, they're this deep team. Like Colorado, it goes a little bit against their DNA, but I think they, they'll they try to manage this one a little bit more just because of where they are in the series. Uh, we know that uh, although the, the power play has has sputtered a bit in this series, like the, their power play can be lethal, um, and the, the rest will tend to put their the whistles away as we get to six and seven. All that stuff points me to uh, another one where I think that unders and first period unders i think this one's a decent one to go to overtime too um a, a good look there would be an overtime bet um for for game six <clears throat> yeah the avs brought some good adjustments to that last game and it was, it was pretty close but i thought they could have got a you know obviously deserving enough win in the end um I, I do think that uh the hints loss is getting a little undervalued i know he hadn't produced and people were ripping on him but he's still a center that they use in every situation that can go head to head with other stars. So yeah, he hasn't entirely thrived this playoffs. He's still going to do better in a lot of those minutes than anyone else on the team. So I think people also kind of wrote that off a little bit because they weren't like thrilled with his production. So I do think that kind of comes into it a little bit. And I think that was part of the reason the abs kind of generate as many chances as they did. Um, I'm with you though, Mike, I do th- lean towards the under. I think there's some value. There's still six and a half at minus 128 about, uh, out there. And I think that's the play. I just, these elimination games, they really do tend to trend down. I think this will be, reminds me a lot actually of the Canucks Oilers game tonight. So I feel like there's a good chance. This will be the one that it tightens up. I kind of still lean with the stars too. It feels like, you know, you always see these and Laviolette said it with like, you can't generate. And it, it's almost like kind of a cliche cringy you know like thing you hear every coach say but you he was saying how you can't generate that level of desperation until you're in that situation yourself 
And I think it did show in some of these game fives where we saw, uh, you know, Boston kind of, I felt like they were there a little more, a little more desperate, a little sharper than the Panthers. And it feels like that was kind of the case in this Avs game too. So I still feel like the stars have a slightly more well-rounded roster. I feel like pretty good about where they've been at in the series. So I kind of lean with Dallas scraping this one out on the road, but I think the under is uh, my preferred play. Yeah, I'm on the same page under uh we know we know the strength uh the trends are strong and leave off i like what you said it's not it's not really dallas's or excuse me colorado's dna but the way that uh i think it was game four the way they got just lit up in the first period uh the first like 10 minutes so they allowed felt like a dozen shots and high high quality scoring chances like they don't want to do that either um that's that's not that's not the formula either so um yeah i i see you know um you know, low scoring, not want to make the big mistake, all, all those type of like, you know, cliches you hear about hockey. And I, I wouldn't mind uh, a Dallas play if you can get even money. That's what I'm looking at right now. Wouldn't mind it just because it's the dog and this seems like a, a very coin flip uh, type game. But other than that, I, I, I'm just, I'm looking at under six and a half here. I feel like it uh, could be a bit of a gift getting the uh, six in the hook. Yeah. And Nick, uh, you, you, you brought up a good point. I think that actually tonight's Vancouver Edmonton game is a good uh, kind of script to go off of. And uh, one thing I was going to bring up in relation to that game is this is also, I think a pretty good live under game. Uh, if there is a couple early goals, I mean, we saw it with Edmonton and Vancouver, the way they played those, the last 30 minutes, I know Vancouver tilted the ice, but Edmonton, I thought still did a pretty decent job of uh, shutting down the middle and getting sticks in the way, et cetera. So, um, even if it's you know one one after ten minutes, uh, look towards those live unders as uh, teams start to to hatch and to batten down the hatches. Uh, it's late. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, that's uh, Colorado and Dallas. Uh, the other game uh, over the weekend on Saturday night, eight p.m. Eastern time. Tim will be thrilled to hear it's John Bucci Gross on play by play, Kevin Weeks on color on ESPN here in the States uh, for Vancouver at Edmonton. Oilers are minus 225. The Canucks traveling at plus 180. Total here is six and a half. I like the Canucks here. I think plus 180 is way too high. I would play it down to 165. I think we'll, it'll move that way. I'd be shocked if it doesn't. Um, there's a couple reasons. One, the, the Canucks just played a really good game. Perhaps they're starting to trend in the right direction. The other side of that equation could be that the Oilers are just out of gas. Um, McDavid, Dreisaitl, Hyman, Bouchard, Ekholm. I mean, Ekholm made a pretty had a rough game. I just think all around, and uh, the DJ Giuseppe goal comes back to him. And I also think, I mean, you can and you can make this argument with with Arthur Silovs, but he's pl- he's the t- he's the goalie for the team that's plus one eighty. But do we expect Calvin Pickard to keep playing as well as he did? He was really good tonight. That the Oilers. I think should be kicking themselves for, for wasting that effort from their third string journeyman goalie. Um, so there's plenty of blow up potential. We just saw with Freddie Anderson basically handed the Rangers a win. If you're go if you're not going to get saves from your goalie, uh, it's, it's, it's an absolute death sentence in the playoffs. So all of this kind of builds up a, a recipe for a bet on the underdog here. Uh, I like the Canucks, Nick. Yeah, I like the Canucks too. I don't know if plus 180 will hold. It seems a little absurd to me, Um, but I'm right with you. And it feels more so, this was something I wrote today. And like, I I fully think people have even stretched up until game five tonight. People stretched, you know, what some of the things that the Canucks even did well a little far. I think that they ran pretty good. They scored on 17% of shots. And I think that was, if anything, just a little favorable to their process. But the reason that I wrote that they could start to do a lot better is that they had so many players who have talent who had underperformed. Where the Oilers, it didn't feel like that anyone was about to step up. There, like it really just felt like it was the Canucks who had some guys like Pedersen who could bring more to the table, and the Oilers were just going to bank on those same guys. And it looked like, like you said, those big dogs for the Oilers, Drysaddle, even uh, McDavid in particular, Ekholm, Bouchard was way less dominant tonight uh he had the bad gaff on the one goal it was tough obviously tonight they deserve to lose 
And, you know, I feel like how could you ever think that this next game is going to go that much differently that you'd lay minus 225? It feels like a complete, you know, number that's set just on the Oilers can't lose this one at home narrative kind of thinking. Like it just, yeah, they obviously deserve to be a slight favorite, but this seems completely wild to me. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, it just, it feels like the Canucks are going to always own these bottom minutes now. And it's just going to come down to what the top stars from the Oilers can bring to the table. And I feel like that's, that's tough. And I think we are going to hear the Skinner versus Pickard debate for this game with the season on the line. I know Pickard was great. They'll probably lean towards him, but still feels like one of those things. Maybe you go back to Skinner. So that adds another layer of volatility. Um, I don't know. And even then Pickard, like he was, it, it worked out great. You can't hate on a guy who saved so many pucks. I still feel like you have to seal the ice on the De Giuseppe goal. He's never ever going to have time to get it up top. So like a really good goaltender, I think doesn't let that one in. And my point is more so probably that we've just seen the absolute peak of Calvin Pickard and it was still a little dicey. I thought there's, you know, there's some moments where he looked, pretty shaky moving around so i don't know it feels like there's so many question marks to not just take your shot on the canucks here it, it feels like a number that's just people saying we can't imagine the oilers going out like this but they're yeah. one step away and it feels like the game going kind of close to tonight is very possible and and i think we've learned this playoffs that we just keep seeing the same teams go out the same way every year like it's not like like the, the maple leafs we're seeing the hurricanes going out the same way basically would anybody be shocked here, Tim? Um, I think this number's crazy. I, I just don't get it. it. It feels like Rangers, Hurricanes all over again. I, I just I don't get how we get here. You, opening plus 180 on Vancouver, they got 35% chance to win the game. I, I just I don't understand. Um, that That's not the series I've been watching. And, and, and look, like... <clears throat> Yeah, you know, Nick, Nick and I have kind of gone back and forth uh, in in our couple group chats about this, and I'm like, oh, you know, I've been you know, everyone every time someone starts to lose, it's like, oh, well, obviously they only have you know one good line and their goaltender shaky. It's like, okay, yeah, then why why don't you have a yacht and a mansion if if you knew that the whole time? But like you said, Leboff, these teams kind of continue to go down the same exact way, and, and that's what I'm I'm kind of getting at. And I feel like we we're getting the luxury of watching it in real time. And it's and then we're still getting dealt a number that seems too long. So to me, it's like yeah. if from a pure numbers perspective, I don't get how you can't play plus one eighty, plus one seventy, plus one sixty. Like it's just in terms of the goaltending is too big a question mark. The bottom six, they still continue to get absolutely. I could play on an Edmonton's bottom six, and you know, no, no, it, I thought it, and I thought that tonight I was like they actually. Like playing all right, like Dylan Holloway, right. I thought it was all right, and, but they still they didn't did. do anything. Yeah, right? like, that, was that was the difference in in uh, the Oilers stars, not just demolishing them, and that's what I think is scary. Like you know, those guys are going to be better in Game Six, but I, that, I mean, that was what swung the difference. Like tonight yeah. was completely different. I don't think you can talk about going, you know, back and forth. I think tonight was a completely different game than basically any yeah. of the any of the previous four, except for the final two periods of Game One when the Oilers were up three goals. But agree. And, and the Oilers messed around too often early in the series for a game like this to happen. One in their big dogs, who knows what they're going to bring now, right? Like, are they, and, how can they respond to that game? And, and with that, the reason, again, you could be right if you're betting Edmonton, laying it and win, but I feel like your reason starts or at least has a big part of it is because I don't see them losing because they have dry side on McDavid and Again, that that can be fine, but I, I don't I don't feel good about doing that and laying it. Um, also, too, this has opened um, the total at six and a half. I like the under. Same, play the song all over again. Under under first uh, under uh, first period. Um, yeah, set your watch to it in these uh, game game sixes and sevens. Yeah, and this is also interesting. So, per the opening odds out of from FanDuel, the only site that so far has goal scores up, all the Oilers top scorers have lower odds in this game than they've had at any other point in the series. So that also kind of sucks because those are going to be really popular plays. They've been great plays in this series, but like dry sidle shorter than he's been Hyman's shortest as he's been in the series. Like McDavid too. The only one who's holding up a similar number as he's had is Bouchard. So 
you can't even tap into the angle as much as you'd want that they're just going to play those guys crazy minutes. I mean, you could, but you're paying a bit of a tax to do it. All right. Uh, so those are the three games coming your way. Um, you can also catch us uh, over the weekend on Power Plays, our YouTube show that our weekly YouTube show presented by Bet365. Uh, but before we get out of here, if you had to pick a favorite bet, Nick, uh, out of these three games, which one would it be? I'm going to go with the first period under in the Bruins-Panthers game. First period under one and a half, I should note. Tim? I will go Dallas-Colorado under six and a half. Great. I'll go Canucks. I was hoping that the Canucks would still be out there. So there you have it. Uh, another episode of Line Change in the books. By the time we see you next, uh, we'll, I think, have um, the conference final set. So get ready for that. For, for Tim and Nick, I'm Michael. Best of luck with your bets over the weekend. 